All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about an interesting topic, and I think that this is definitely going to be contentious for some, but I wanted to do a video, a kind of update and revised video on what my thoughts were and opinions on Falkneven. Now, as the title of this video says, we're going to be talking about why I actually do not like or kind of hate Falkneven nowadays. Now, I want to preface this with something that I've talked about from other brands previously, brands like Survive Knives, brands like Half Face Blades, brands like Gerber, brands like Montana Knife Company, and other such um, that have and have not been featured on the channel. And that is that I do not think that objectively speaking, Falkneven knives are poorly crafted, that they're not well made. I don't think that objectively this knife is bad. Like knives that are made by companies like Gerber, I do think are objectively poorly made. And as I've showcased on this channel, I've showcased failures and um, like the knives breaking, right? So. It, when it comes down to Falkneven, I don't think that these knives are bad, but in this video, I'm gonna be going over a little bit more comprehensively why I dislike these knives. And it really comes down to the kind of TLDR for this video is that due to other competitive offerings out there, or other competitive options, Falkneven has really failed to innovate. And I don't wanna say that they haven't innovated at all because they have released you know, newer, better lines to their existing um, knives, such as this is the Falkneven S1, so we're gonna be looking at in this video. And they've released things like the you know, Pro and other types of knives that take it, you know, make it a better steel. But what I really am talking about here is that the actual core knife itself, the Falkneven S1, really hasn't seen any meaningful um, <clears throat> of additions or modifications since really this year and about all they've done to this knife um, as a bone stock s1 is made this sheath this is the 2.0 sheath you guys can see here and uh, this now has a locking mechanism which we'll get into i do actually like the sheath but i wanted to talk about this knife as a whole unit now um, i get a lot of requests because i've previously owned falknevens i've previously owned the f1 the a1 but i wanted to get the s1 here um, because the S1, the S1 here is a very interesting knife um, because I think it really kind of sits in that middle point between it's bigger than the F1, but it is of course not as big or as unwieldy as the A1. Now it's interesting too because when you look at the S1 in comparison to how it lines up, things like the Falcon even A1 are larger than things like the Cold Steel SRK, but this is also a little bit bigger than the Master Hunter. So this would be more like SRK C sized, um, but still maybe a little bit bigger. So so <clears throat> Falcon even doesn't exactly have a perfect like lineup with its nearest competitive brethren, but yeah. So let's jump into it. So first off, I have owned Generation One or you know the kind of more original Falcon Evens, and I will say that I do like the Falcon Even, the original Falcon Evens, a lot more. Things like the A1 were actually pretty good, and I do genuinely think that the A1 is a decent wilderness, um, kind of especially wintertime survival knife. And we've talked about that before in the, this. Uh, channel. I've made plenty of videos about it, but with the generation two and the generation two, you can kind of tell they have updated sheaths and the sheath is pretty cool. Like I said, we'll circle back to that, but the knives are not as cool. So one of the things that they've done, at least that I've noticed is that they've changed their formulation for their handles. And these handles are a lot more of a hard plastic. Now it is true. They are still a rubberized kind of plastic, but the original Falknevens were a lot softer and almost more squishy. These are a very hard plastic. So it honestly, to me, ironically and kind of sadly makes these knives feel a little bit cheaper, but this is a much harder plastic and far less malleable, which is a big ding for me because they were already doing it right. Another thing I've noticed with their newer Falkneven lineup is that the handles themselves and thickness are far thinner, especially with this guy. You guys can see here that the um, <clears throat> handle here really tapers down quite thin, especially towards the pinky. Now they may have done this at, um, or because of user request, but I really liked the large kind of overbuilt handles. And as I mentioned in previous Falkneven reviews, I liked the bigger handles because the bigger handles, bigger handles were built with 
the idea in mind that you would be potentially using these knives with mitten or gloved hands. And so when you have mittens or gloves, obviously, if you are a large sized hand, that makes your hand extra large, right? Or sometimes double XL, right? So using mittens and gloves increases your hand size. So the larger the handle within reason, so long as it's not unwieldy when you're you know, not, when you don't have mittens or gloves on, um, <clears throat> you optimally kind of want that. So for me to see that they've narrowed out the handle, especially as much as they have, like you guys can see here, um, this is a quite narrow handle. Hopefully that comes out there. And so that is a little bit unfortunate. Now, luckily they haven't really messed with the thickness on these knives too much. This is still five millimeters thick or half centimeter, whatever you wanna consider it. It is definitely chunky. And I think that that kind of goes with the premise of what these guys are designed to be. Now, of course, too, another thing that's worth noting with Falcon Evens is they can't make them too thin because this is a triple layer laminate VG10. So that means that there's more stainless um, steel uh, kind of laminated to a VG10 core. Now that is kind of where we get to the crux of this knife because Falknevens are not inherently cheap. This one was about $160. S1s, typically speaking, F1s will go for about $120 to $140. S1s, 180 or sorry, 160 to 180. And then A1s will go for about 180 to 220. So none of these knives are particularly cheap especially in comparison to competitive offerings. But the biggest disappointment that I have is that the price seems to steadily increase on Falcon Evens, but the materials have essentially remained the same. And while the base materials are not necessarily bad, VG10 has never been a particularly great wilderness steel. And we see this time and again with knife reviewers such as Joe X. Now, Joe X admittedly is abusive to knives, but that is the purpose of the channel. And it does does demonstrate and illustrate that VG10 is a harder stainless steel and if because of that, for that reason, you do notice that these knives will chip out more easy. These knives will definitely be damaged as far as their edge goes more easily by impacts. Now, obviously, if you try to chop down a you know piece of rebar with any knife, you're probably gonna get some at least mild um, edge damage, but with something like VG10, OS8, OS10, you will see more noticeable um, edge damage. Now, what also compounds? Now, what also compounds the edge damage for these knives is the fact that these are convex ground. Now, I don't personally mind the convex nature of these knives, and if you guys know. Um, the channel, you know that I love my Bark River knives and Bark River convexes everything from Scandi grinds, flat grinds, full flat grinds. They do all of them with convex grinds. So convex isn't inherently weak, but it is weaker because there is a less supported cutting edge. So when you combine a steel like VG10 with a less supported edge, due to something like convex or the convex grind nature of this, you will expect to see more chipping. <clears throat> now, those things aside, what do I think of the S1 as a whole? Um, as far as Falcon Even knives go, like I said, I've owned the F1, now the S1, and I've owned the A1 as well. I do not particularly hate these knives. I do think that they are solid, decent picks, um, but I do think that they're, they come at a very expensive premium. Now, like I said, pros are you are dealing with a full tang. Other things I like is that the spine is sharp, so you can strike ferro rods out of the box. And one other thing that I really do like, and something that I think knife makers like Cold Steel and Falcon even pioneered, albeit Falcon even kind of copied the design and copied the homework of the Cold Steel, which we'll get to in a moment. But um, I do like that these are fully rubberized handles. Now, like I said, I really wish um, and would have loved to see this be a um, a softer, more malleable plastic or rubber, as we see in other knives, such as the Scrapyard Knife Company's WS1021, or once again with Demco, or with Cold Steel. Uh, I really think that these softer handles make a lot of sense because they they one help soak up a lot of shock from doing things like chopping and batoning, but they also thermally insulate your hand very well. Now, um, aside from that, like I said, these knives are decent. I just personally think that the value equation for most Falcon Evens, especially nowadays, is harder to add up. So that's one of my biggest issues with it. So I've given you guys waiting long enough. 
let's discuss some competitive options and we'll go over price points and all that fun jazz. So first off, it's a bit bigger. This is definitely more Falcon even A1 sized, but the Cold Steel SRK. This is where the S1 and the SRK stack up. Now, the S1 and the SRK are actually fairly similar in size. The, you know, um, S1 is a little bit smaller, about an inch smaller, but um, thickness-wise, they're about the same thickness. And um, yeah, so these two are actually probably a little bit closer in relation than the um, Falcon even A1. The A1's definitely larger than the SRK, but either way, you could draw a you know comparison between the two. Now, like I said, the SRK has a far more grippy handle to it and it is immediately noticeable in addition to this too it also just has more texture to it so you feel a lot more locked in with whatever grip you have aside from that the same basic geometry you know this srk is just a standard flat grind but um, they have the same basic you know grind line same basic clip pointed shape once again, the S1 is going to be very similar to an SRKC, but you guys can definitely see where Falcon even copied Cold Steel's homework. They are very, very, very similar. Now, the SRK does come in a wide variety of different um, steel flavors and handle colors, but at the core, you can pick up um, Cold Steel's and CPM 3V or SRK's and CPM 3V. That's what this guy is. And the craziest thing about it is that for the same price of a Falcon even F1 or sorry, S1, you can get this in CPM 3V, this SRK. So this is a larger knife. It's in CPM 3V, which is a far more durable uh, steel than your VG10 laminate. And also this is going to, in my opinion, perform just as well, if not slightly better. So this is one, and sometimes two, depending on if you find these for sales. I've seen Cold Steel SRKs and CPM 3V um, in certain places for as cheap as $89.99. So we're talking for actually half the price or very close to half the price of this bad boy. You can get something that is bigger, something that has a better performing steel and uh, something that in my opinion has a better handle and better sheath. So for me, that's kind of a knock. Now, another one that is a very close um, you know, relative, the Cold Steel Master Hunter in CPM 3V. Now these, I personally bought mine at $89.99. You can get these for right around that price. Once again, not everywhere and typically on sales, but even at full price, this Master Hunter in CPM 3V is about $120. So we're already talking, once again, you know, a solid, about $40 cheaper than the S1. Now, like I said, it is a little bit shorter. You guys can hopefully see that, but <clears throat> they have comparable thicknesses. The handle is much thicker on the Master Hunter and it feels much more filling. And once again, with a lot of these cold weather um, idea knives or winter survival knives, the idea is that you're probably not gonna be out there barehanded. So you're going to be using gloves, you're gonna be using mittens. And so having that extra thick um, or a little bit wider handle gives you a better grip area. <clears throat> now, of all my knives that are similar to the SRK and the Master Hunter and stuff, the closest thing that I have to the S1, and it is still different, is the Demco Knives Free Rain. These guys are about the same um, overall length. The only difference is the um, Demco Free Rain has a little bit longer handle and a little bit shorter blade. But overall size, as you guys can see there, they are very similar. The Free Rain's a tad scotch bigger, but honestly, very similar. Now, of course, the blade shapes are going to be pretty drastically different, but this is another good example, and I wanted to make this uh, example because the Free Rain is made out of OS 10A. Now, this knife comes in at about usually $100 to $120, so still a bit cheaper than your Falcon even S1. But you're getting that exposed full tang, you're getting about the same thickness in blade steel, and you're getting about the same blade or edge performance. And this is something that's interesting because a lot of people typically say like, oh, you know, I'd never buy a, you know, OS 10A Demco free reign. The, the steel is just not a high enough performance for me. But things like this, um, 
folk even s1 are once again in a lot of times or a lot of cases more expensive and have just about the same edge performance and edge retention now finishing it up and kind of with our last comparison for four similar swedish knives um we have the Mora Garberg. So this is the Garberg, of course, the classic Garberg. It is fairly similar in size. Of course, the S1 is slightly bigger, but for the most part, it is pretty darn close. And uh, of course, thickness is where the S1 is going to lead the way. You guys can see there, the S1 is a bit thicker, but at the same time too, realistically speaking, these are very similar in capability, capacity, and overall performance. Now, the big difference here is that the Mora is coming in at about 60 to $70, and that's a substantial amount cheaper than your S1. Now, granted, this is uh, 1095 high carbon, or you can get it in Sandvix 14C28N, so there is a little bit of differential there, and the materials will not be the same as VG10. They will not necessarily be higher quality, but at the same time too, once again, it's $100 less for a knife that, functionally speaking, is pretty much the same. So that is the Falkneven S1. Now, like I said, I wanted to circle back to the sheath. Now, this is the modern kind of um, 2.0 sheath, and I will say, I do like the sheath, it is pretty solid. You have a nice sized belt loop here if you wanna carry it a little bit higher waisted. You do have the belt loop here, um, if you guys can see that. And then down here you have a nice drainage hole slash kind of slit for adding paracord or adding different things. Now of course the elephant in the room is this little guy right here. This is your locking mechanism. So it has a little pull tab to it so you can easily unlock the knife, um, but then you can just push back to lock it. So essentially all this does is it presses down a little lock bar on the uh, back of the handle and that puts a high degree of pressure and friction on the um, handle itself and makes the knife Pretty much impossible to retract so you pull that out and uh, even still it's not super easy to come out um, but it's it comes out so yeah that is the falcon even s1 now um, like i said a lot of people have requested me to get another falcon even to compare it to you know things like the cold steel srk things like the master hunter and so i definitely wanted to do that and so hopefully you guys enjoyed this um, kind of comparison and overview of the falcon even and why i'm not as big a fan of the brand even as i used to be like i used to like the brand even more than I do now. And that's because, like I said, just realistically speaking, Falcon even just really has not innovated that much. This is um, <clears throat> not the best, but also not the worst. There are far better deals out there. And uh, once again, I'm not gonna say that you should not buy the Falcon even F, but there are some really solid contenders out there. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.